It's a beautiful day for pickleball on the APP Tour. Delray Beach, Florida, just north of Miami, is known as the Village by the Sea. Here it seems the sun is always shining, but the only glow that these professional pickleball players has traveled to this weekend that they care about is golden. And to do that, they have to win right here on championship court of the Delray Beach Tennis Center. Welcome to stop number four of the 2024 Tour, the APP Classic Classic. Del Rey Beach. We've got a fantastic championship Sunday coming your way. And here it is, the Aura Gold Medal Match menu. Starting off with women's singles, Judit Castillo taking on Megan Fudge. And then we move into mixed doubles. We got George Johnson and Gabe Cardio taking on Jill Braverman and Andre Diascu. And then wrapping things up with men's singles, Chris Hayward and JW Johnson going at it. There's a live look at Judit Castillo getting all warmed up. So now that we've told you what's on tap, let's introduce you to the ones calling you through the action. Welcome into the broadcast booth. I'm AJ McCord alongside Next Gen National Team Coach Chad Edwards, Pro Pickleball Coach Dominic Catalano. Really excited to get into this women's singles match. And Dom, I want to start with you. Megan Fudge, so consistent. Week in, week out. What makes her so dominant in the women's singles game? Her work ethic, for one. I mean, there's no one in this game that really works harder than Megan Fudge. You see right there, 27 total APP medals in 2023. But it's that work ethic that puts her over the top. And really, she's so consistent on Championship Sunday in all three divisions. But right now, we're talking about singles here against Yuta Castillo. Her biggest thing is when can she approach the net? When and is the right is it the right time? That's going to be the difference maker for me with Megan Fudge. She did that in her last matchup. She looked really good, so that's going to be my difference maker for Megan Fudge here on Championship Sunday. Is can she get to the kitchen line? And so now you're taking a look at her opponent, Judith Castillo. It's the fourth time, Chad, that these two women are meeting in women's singles gold medal match. Judith owning that head-to-head, -head, two to one. What does she have to do to extend that lead? Yeah, Castillo opening up the 2024 season, taking women's gold in Punta Gorda. And she's another one of those players that is always looking to fine-tune her game and elevate it. Her thing is her court, her court coverage. She is so good going sideline to sideline and coming forward to the kitchen line. It's going to be interesting to see how Megan Fudge can keep her off balance. But Castillo was tested a little bit on Thursday. She had a slight stumble, fought hard to get here. So this is going to be another good one. Looking forward to it, and we'll get to the action in just a few minutes. So don't go anywhere. The APP Vlasic Classic Delray Beach Championship Sunday happening on the other side of this break. My name is Chef Jamoke Jackson. I'm here with Vlasic Pickles, and I'm putting the pickle back in pickleball. In pickleball, a chop is a slice from high to low to put a backspin on the pickleball. I'm chopping up plastic pickles to make this sweet and savory chopped pickle salad. Feta cheese, Kalamata olives, olive oil, red wine vinegar, lemon juice, sugar, black pepper, toss to mix. Sweet, heat, and full of flavor. 18 years from tonight, Grant Gill will become a legend when he totally kills it at his improv class's graduation performance. Knees will be slapped. Suds will be sprayed. People won't know what hurts more, their cheeks or their sides. That's why he's already keeping himself in shape and razor sharp today with health tips and wellness tools from AARP to help make sure his health lives as long as he does. Because the younger you are, the more you need AARP.
The APP is sponsored by Vlasic Pickles, official pickle of the APP Tour. AARP, helping your health and happiness live as long as you do. And Rainstorm, clean, plant-based energy. Look at this resume Fudge is bringing into this women's singles gold medal match. Two gold, six silvers, and two bronze. Earlier in the year, it was Castillo who walked away from a gold medal in the matchup between the two of them. Castillo with a strong start there. And she gets it done. Cross court forehand for the win. Unit Castillo takes game one. Megan Fudge in a rhythm now, not someone to ever count out of a game. Yudit Castillo, this is her opportunity to end the match. Yep. Yes, she can. Yudit Castillo wins the first women's singles gold medal of 2024. An understandably exciting start to 2024 for Yudit Castillo. Really, you guys, we have seen her come into her own, her own here on the APP Tour in the last year or so. What is the most improved aspect of her game, do you think, Dom? Like Chad hit in the in the Open, she just continues to add tools to her toolbox. She's never satisfied with where she's at. Even though she comes out on top in Punta Gorda, she wins. You're on top of the game right there. She was not satisfied, though. So it's her continuing to win but not be satisfied with her game, continue to add tools to the toolbox, continue to improve week in and week out, and that's exactly what Yuta Castillo is doing. And so it will be Yuta Castillo getting us started here in Delray Beach. Women's singles gold medal match underway. And that's the, that's the court coverage there from Castillo that, that we're talking about. She chooses the right ball to approach on. It was a good ball from Fudge, but just a solid backhand volley there from Castillo with heavy slice. Great placement there, Castillo. Two-handed backhand in the corner. Well, good coverage at the kitchen line again. I don't think it was her choice to come up. Fudge left her a short ball in the transition area, so she was forced to come up, but again, makes the most of it right there. That slice from Fudge sailing wide and little wind picking up. You guys both pointing. Yeah, and right now, right now the wind's blowing across the court. So I, if, if anything, it may favor Castillo a little bit at times changing behind her back. <laughs> nice little cut right there, but Fudge benefiting off the ball, off the tape, where she's able to reset herself. And watch this little cut down the line. Beautifully done. That's tough. She made it look easy. Oh, yeah, Great that's a good setup. There. Well, so right there as well is that the, the deeper balls from Fudge were really pressuring Castillo there. We see the shorter ball from Castillo, and she's already back behind the baseline. So Fudge just takes advantage of it, hits a little bit softer ball that just dies on the court. Oh, Good get from Fudge to just be able to get there and get a paddle on it. But again, dead sprint, so hard to slow your body and the momentum down. Too much momentum. That little flip lob goes long. 
4-2, the score for Castillo serve. You did Castillo just going sideline to sideline. But you see there that Castillo was able to step into the ball and, and push that ball deeper to give her the opportunity to come forward. And then once she's up there, she can control that kitchen line. That's one thing as well that is, has cleaned up a little bit in her game and her volleys while she's up at the kitchen line. The backhand cross court with an angle. Yeah, I mean, just look at that. It's that step volley. That's a tennis shot right yeah. there. That step well, volley where you're stepping into it and you're making contact with mm -hmm. the ball as you're stepping and making that as one. That, that's why we see the transition of tennis players mm -hmm. into singles so much easier than the doubles game because you almost don't have the time for that stick volley in doubles. Yudit Castillo playing collegiate tennis at Northwestern State after leaving her home country of Spain. Uh, Megan's going to challenge this one. So originally, Megan called it out. Yudit was like, yeah, come on. So then Megan was like, was it it? Yudit said yes. Then Megan asked lead referee Trish Stewart. The, the call was going to stand, and now Fudge challenging the call. Again, a, a, a good challenge right yeah. here. And, but it, the thing was, was that Megan Fudge really didn't think she saw it clearly. So by rule, if she didn't see it clearly, the ball's in. The ball's in. So she's going to challenge the the in call. But it does look like it is catch the line right there. Nice shot from Yudi Castillo. Wait, waiting on confirmation from Brett Hot Sauce Hotless over there in the video referee booth. So as we wait for that call, Castillo building up a five-point lead here and with the introduction of rally scoring to singles here in 2024 on the APP Tour, how does that impact how a player views a deficit like this? Well, it can go either way. You can get a big lead and, and again, get – we'll hear from Chris Stewart here. Review, the call on the court is confirmed. The ball was in. Two challenges remain. So, like you're saying, you could get a nice lead and all of a sudden get comfortable, yep. and that's the last thing you need in rally scoring because we've seen lead we've seen leads disappear quickly with this rally scoring format, and you have players that lean kind of both ways. I like it, I don't like it. <laughs> we like it because it kind of makes every point worth something here. Castillo making every single one of those points count. Seven two. She's up here in game one of our women's singles gold medal match. Oh, it was there. Weight just fell back a little bit as she hit that forehand. We saw Fudge working on those rolls before this match started, and that was one of the things her coach was pointing out. You have to stay down and hit through that ball. Once the weight falls back, then paddle kind of lifts and you cut the swing short. That's a much better approach right there for Megan Fudge and a great stick volley on the forehand side. Gets Castillo full sprint, but Chad, sometimes I think we have the same brain. <laughs> as Chad was saying that, because we were both watching Megan Fudge warm up and that was a shot she was working on. What a great spot there. Castillo goes cross court, pushes that ball just inside the sideline. Well, I thought Castillo was in trouble there for a little bit. That wasn't the deepest ball that she came up on. But somehow getting a paddle on that first volley, able to regain control. Good ball up the line there from Megan Fudge. Had Castillo fully extended, almost leaning to her forehand just enough. It's in. Nice angle. The overhead winner there from Fudge, getting her fired up. Nice lob from Megan Fudge. Be able to keep that in, too, from the baseline. Oh, the heavy cut. 
cut on that ball on the run there from Castillo. How easy did she make that look? Oh, right here. Just slides through the court. Gets herself back in the middle, sets herself up perfectly, and now she's up 10 5. Oh, that's dirty right there. I thought the ball was going to cut away from Castillo because Budge put so much spin on it. And it did. It. it did. But watch this. The, the thing that she does so well is she gets the paddle outside the ball. So now when she can hit through it, she's able to, to create that angle. If if she had have followed the spin, yeah. no way that she would have been able to get that back cross court. So a timeout called here on the court by Megan Fudge. She wants to think about things. Trailing by six here in game one. Perfect time for us to take a turn. hydration break, all of us, with our water bottles already I halfway got, through mine. I've, so. got, I've got the uh, ooh. Oh. I got straw nozzle on mine. You got the large mouth? Yeah. They got there locks go. on top, too. Yeah. It's very nice. Locks. Very nice, because there's nothing worse <laughs> than having your water spill in your backpack. <laughs> so thank you to Tervis for these customized ones. That's great, because we want to make sure they don't get mixed up in the booth. <laughs> thank you so much to Tervis. That was our Tervis hydration break. And now, talking about the action on the court, you guys, Castillo has really come out. And she told me before we started this match, my goal is just to play my game and to just not worry so much about what Megan is bringing into this or the consistency or anything of, like of that nature. Instead, it's just how do I play my game? How has she been able to do that? Well, yeah, and, and I think that's the, the biggest thing, right? You want to play to your strengths, and you're going to have to make some adjustments. But what she's doing right now is she's choosing really good balls to approach on, and once she gets that depth and she can push Fudge back from the, from the baseline a little bit, then she can control the kitchen line. Out of the timeout, Castillo just picking up where she left off. And it's much more consistent with the wind right now, so it's going to be mm -hmm. interesting to see with the end change. Castillo's uh, able to be a lot more aggressive, and those balls are, are pushing with the wind behind. I just find it very difficult to cut that ball through the air right now. But just like that on that backhand right there that Castillo hits through that was low, she tries to cut through it, but because the wind's at her back, it just carries yeah. it even more because of that backspin. Oh, that ball. Yep. Just a little long. It's almost it's almost like I would say for, for Fudge right now is to, to test it a little bit, slice a shorter ball, force Castillo to, to come up and, and be hitting it from her toes. Oh, a little love off the tape there for Castillo, and, and she'll take it as it sets up game point. So Castillo just has been so in rhythm, so controlled. And now has a chance to take game one of our women's singles gold medal match. Oh, that's pretty. It was set up by what she was working on earlier, that cross-court drop right there. And then sets up the open, side, open court on the opposite side. Nice construction there from Megan Fudge. Yeah, see, that's that's there's the shorter ball with with spin. It's forcing Castillo to come forward, and it's dying quickly. So now Castillo having to hit it from her toe, she's either one going to leave that ball up or run the risk of hitting it deep. So Castillo calling that ball, ball out. It gets behind her. So another look at it here. So the ball back on the side of Yudit Castillo and a chance here. Another game point opportunity. Castillo cross court for the winner. Fudge's response just wide. So Yudit Castillo takes game one of our women's singles gold medal match here in Delray Beach. Game two when we return.
Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. A typical insurance? You're just another senior. That is the third health insurance commercial with seniors at a farmer's market. Right? Don't get me wrong, I love a fresh heirloom, but it's like those companies think we're all the same. That's why I chose Humana. Before I signed up, I spoke to someone who actually listened to what I needed. She told me about benefits that were right for me, like vision and dental, all in my budget. I finally feel in control. What are you doing? Taking control. <laughs> Humana, a more human way to health care. What Dylan Frazier and Tyra Black can do. I can and Frazier the opportunity to go on the attack and be aggressive as well. He and Hurricane Tyra Black capture the gold medal. Johnson and Frazier so familiar with each other. Chad, we've talked about matches in which it's consistency versus athleticism. This one, consistency versus consistency. What is going to be the difference maker? was had in Miami and here in Delray Beach we're having a fantastic championship Sunday already one game into our women's singles gold medal match and here's a look at our upcoming schedule next up we head to Cincinnati to start the month of May and then it's the Zimmer Biomet New York City Open at the end of May before we head back to the West Coast which cannot wait for the Newport tournament that's always one of my favorite ones and then Chicago Dallas visit the app doc global to Find out more information about the upcoming schedule and can't wait to see you on tour this summer. Game two, underway now with Fudge's serve. It's a good ball right there from Castillo, but we're going to see with this end change and see how it comes into effect, Chad. We talked about it with the wind now a little bit. It seemed like it was going to be at the back of <laughs> it's, it's Megan Fudge, and now it's switched. Down. It's literally thawed down. Challenge. So Castillo questioning I, whether that call was a out. Challengeable but ball. Again, why not? You got three. <laughs> we know it's challengeable, but Castillo <laughs> but opting <laughs> not to do that. So. Every 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 line call that exactly. ends the point is challengeable. But I was saying that was close, close enough, enough to, to call. challenge. Yeah. <laughs> And Wait. it's going to be something that, like, we've seen a few times already this year, but as players get used to this new rule, I feel like we're going to see that strategically come into play, which is what you guys have been talking about with sort of viewing it as more timeouts or whatever. Well, and, and that's what we were talking about at the end of game one there. Yeah. We were surprised that, that Fudge didn't use the challenge, especially on game point. Good read. Oh, double Fudge. up. Yeah, Fudge read the first one beautifully. Got there. Just couldn't really do too much with it. But then, like you said, Chad, Yuta Castillo doubles up on the backhand side of Fudge. So it's a 3-1 lead here for Castillo in game two. So 
Bolt has set itself up, but it's that backhand cut right there that is spinning away. <laughs> yeah, it's it's spinning away. It's staying low, and it's setting up that finish volley. Castillo just getting a little too big. They almost had too much of an open court. So good right there, going and doubling up again on that backhand side. But I was going to hit on both of these ladies are utilizing that cut yep. backhand really well from the prior point. So Castillo starting game two very similar to how she started game one, an early lead. And just extending it there is that, Castillo. That one just didn't grab off the paddle of fudge. Usually... She hits that higher heavy top spin ball that seemed to just slide off the paddle. That one flattened out as well. So, two miss hits from both of those ladies on balls that they're usually really consistent with. Good volleys there from Fudge. Castillo is doing a great job to get there, but can't get that ball to get back in. And so it is going to be Fudge with an opportunity to tie things up here in game two. Again, floated on her again. Yo, I'm looking at the palm trees outside of the stadium, and it's consistent movement. In here, this flag that's across from us, and what we feel in the booth, it's it's consistently swirling. It's so hard to pick a direction. Wow, that was that Holy was close. Cow. Somebody in the crowd started cheering on that backhand volley from Castillo. Fudge went and got it. out here from Fudge immediately as soon as she hits that ball in the net, but again, it's Castillo controlling these points too well. Yuta Castillo locked in and looking for gold here in Delray Beach. This is the fourth time these two are meeting in a gold medal match. Yuta owns the head-to-head -head two golds to one. Megan, trying to even things up. So while we have a break in the action here on Championship Court, let's take a look at our Fulfill Raising the Bar moment of the tournament. You guys, hands down, got to be this one. Here we go again. Dylan <laughs> Frazier, ladies and gentlemen, ended up in DJ Mez's booth and then coming back. What a recovery from him on this point. I mean, point. it was even just keeping his balance when he was so fully outstretched there. But then coming back forward with the winner down the line. What we didn't see in that one was the smart play from J.W. Johnson throwing up the lob while Frazier was on the other side of the court <laughs> to buy him time to get back. That reminds me of the drills that we used to do in soccer where it was like you run from one cone to the next, one cone to the next, like a little shuttle drill kind of thing. So much athleticism <laughs> shown by Frazier and Johnson in that match. It was crazy. He just couldn't stop his momentum mm -hmm. after he ran up, got that drop shot. Hey, if that's me, I, I might get to that ball, but I'm taking out the rainstorm you may cooler. Have to, you just would have taken a seat. Both those chairs and <laughs> gone through the DJ booth. Or you just that, take a seat and say, J-Dub, finish it. You yeah, got it. it. Yeah, pretty much. Because you did, you did go, it's singles. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm like the uh, I'm like the, the race cars with, that have the parachute in the back that need to slow down. Pull. Yeah. I, if, if I don't have one of those, I'm not stopping. Yeah. <laughs> I like that analogy. Fudge trying to get to the kitchen line right there and just overhits it a little bit on her approach. Uh, 
That was a better job from Fudge there. I'm watching her positioning on the baseline. That last point there, she stepped up to the baseline, was taking those balls actually inside the baseline. So it put more pressure and didn't allow Castillo time to recover. And again. Well, that was my difference maker in the open, was when can and how can effectively Megan Fudge get to the kitchen line and approach and put balls away just like that. That's what she needs to do consistently. That time it was Castillo coming to the kitchen and then cross court putting Fudge off, off balance. But again, it's that cut backhand that slides and, and almost that one checked up where the other ones had been going through the court. Oh, change Ooh, of pace from Castillo. Works out well. 11-6 lead. That's just a beautiful drop shot. The touch here from Castillo. Fudge almost gets there, but... Too good. A little help from the net court as well. Right now, everything going Castillo's way. So a timeout called on the court. Another look here. Yeah, again, when it's going good, it's going good. And you're going to get balls like that off the tape that just stay in. And right now, Castillo riding that wave. Yudit Castillo with two golds against Fudge. But worth noting that that first gold that she won over Fudge was on an at the tournament in Sacramento last year that Fudge had to pull out of the match because of illness. And so that's another reason that that Punta Gorda win was so important for Castillo because it was the first time that she'd gotten the gold over Megan while the two had both been at their best. Learn a little bit more about Yuta Castillo, 26 years old, now calls Louisiana home, but originally born in Spain. Played her collegiate tennis at Northwestern State and trades with Todd Walker, who I got a former Major League Baseball player. Got a text from him about an hour ago before this match started, and he was set up at home. He had to go home. He was here this weekend, but he had to go home. He's calling the Kentucky Alabama baseball game this weekend from his house, but wanted to show his support for Yuta Castillo. Always good having him around. He's got some good stories. <laughs> well, he's, you know, pretty knowledgeable. He's very knowledgeable, yeah, but yeah, professional def athletic. Definitely helps <laughs> you to train. <laughs> Keeps her on her game. Yeah, just, yeah, it just got behind Fudge right there. She wasn't able to bring it back, and again. We're, what we're seeing is whoever can step in, take that ball inside the baseline and really put pressure on is coming away with the point. And so far, Castillo's been able to do it more than Fudge. She just can't find the groove right now. But th that was such a good constructed point from Megan Fudge. She got exactly what she was looking for. Did a great job on the approach. Castillo's consistency, her construction of these points, all leading to this moment. Championship opportunity. Oh, she guessed right, and she got it. Yudit Castillo takes home the gold in our women's singles gold medal match for the second time here in 2024. Castillo fired up as she gets ready to bring home some more hardware. From here in Delray Beach, we'll be right back to hear from her. Unless it's less beer. Cut tire.
nothing brings us together like Eggland's best eggs. We love the taste, always so fresh and delicious, plus superior nutrition. For us, it's eggs any style, as long as they're the best. Eggland's best. takes home the gold here in Delray Beach, Chad. How'd she do it? Yeah, just her ability to take that ball early and choosing the right balls with the approach shot and allowed her to come up, really take control of the kitchen line, keep that pressure on Megan Fudge. And it seemed like whatever Fudge did, Castillo just had an answer for. So Castillo getting another gold over Megan Fudge. We're going to throw it down to AJ McCord for our Franklin post-match interview. Yuta, just starting this season so consistently here on the APP Tour, your second gold medal in women's singles. How have you developed your game? Honestly, a lot of practice, you know, just consistently going out there and working more specifically on what I need to improve um, instead of just like rolling to the court and hitting for two, three hours. Um, I mean, kudos to everybody up there and up there. Uh, they, uh, they are the ones who like make everything happen here. So thank you guys. What does it mean to you to take home this gold medal from Delray Beach with a crowd like this supporting you? It was amazing. You know, uh, Florida has, uh, it, it was here my first medal this year in Punta Gorda. I honestly like the weather. You know, when it's a little bit hot, uh, the ball is Franklin and the ball is a little bit slower. It uh, actually helps my game a little bit more because uh, it gets more physical. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. I think it's Florida, the one doing the work. Last year, we talked about just how you were ready to commit to this sport. You are ready to give Pro Pickleball a shot. And already, the month is April, and you have two gold medals. How much does that validate all the hard work that you've put into this moment? I mean, sometimes we think about it, and, you know, when we win one, one gold medal, we're like, okay, so we've done it, you know. But that's not the hard part. The hard part is actually consistently getting in there. And I value them more because I know the work that is behind and uh, all the sacrifices and everything that we put all the travel, all the not being at home, you know, so it means a lot, and hopefully not the last one this year on the APP Tour. Congratulations, Judith. Thank you so much. All right, well, again, Chad, we talked about it in the open. It's what Yuta Castillo does on the court, but it's not about being satisfied, and that's exactly what she that's, said in her interview. That's what I was, that it's, was the key point. Right, for that it's, she's not satisfied with just one. She wants multiple. Well, she has multiple so far, and she is looking really good in 2024. Yeah, it's it's definitely sometimes it's easy to get that first one. It's more difficult to stay prolonged and win and win multiple. All right, so we have one gold medal match down. Let's play two more, shall we? We have our mixed doubles gold medal match coming up next. Georgia Johnson, Gabe Tardio taking on Jill Braverman and Andre Diescu. And then after that, men's singles, it's going to be Chris Hayworth against J.W. Johnson. And we're going to pick up the action starting at 2 o'clock Eastern. Join us on CBS Sports Network for the conclusion of the APP Vlasic Classic Delray Beach Championship Sunday. Off to a stellar start. So meet us over on CBS Sports Network. We'll see you there, 2 o'clock Eastern Time.